Hi, I'm Bryce Merkel Sasaki, and we're here at Graph Connect Europe in London, and I have with me Luan Mosquita, a senior consultant at GraphAware, our Neo, one of our Neo4j partners. So, Luan, talk to me about Spring Data Neo4j. What is it for maybe people who are a little unfamiliar with it? Okay, so for people who are uh, already Spring Data users, uh, Neo4j is uh, Spring Data Neo4j really allows you to map your uh, domain objects uh, to the graph. So we hope that uh, with Spring Data Neo4j, you should be able to focus just on your domain model and your entities and your business logic, uh, and not worry about low-level interaction uh, with the graph. Um, the good thing about Spring Data Neo4j 4x onwards is that uh, there's been a design decision to separate the core object mapping library from Spring. So in earlier versions, um, you had to use Spring or not at all. But now, because we've broken those libraries apart, uh, even people that don't want to use Spring for a variety of reasons can use Neo4j OGM, which is the core library, and does all the object graph mapping for you. So uh, you kind of get like you know a, a dual benefit. Yeah. Okay. okay, great. And then can you talk to me about how Spring Data Neo4j 4.1 is different than 4.0? Right. So uh, 4.0, first of all, introduced um, was rewritten from scratch, and when I say that, it's um, we didn't build on any code from SDN three, right? Uh, we wrote, rewrote it from scratch, and the reason for that is SDN three focused uh, on embedded on embedded Neo for J. It was mm -hmm. for historical reasons, uh, it was designed to work with embedded. When uh, Neo for J remote server came about, um, it was just that you know it never caught up, so the performance wasn't so great. Um, so that's why SDN four really uh, rewrote every line of code, newly designed, everything was fresh, uh, to support a highly performant um, object graph mapper over the wire, over HTTP, but via the Cypher transactional endpoint, um, to, to address this kind of shortcoming. SDN 4.1 uh, really introduced the concept of two more drivers. One is the embedded driver, uh, for you to still work with embedded databases, and then the bolt driver which has been, of course, released, um, or rather 3.0 has been released this morning. Uh, we're happy to say that we've upgraded the OGM uh, during the keynote, so it's already compatible with 3. Uh, that is really the major difference between 4, 3, 4, and 4.1. So now you're, you have all, all kinds of drivers, three drivers available uh, to address any kind of um, communication that you want. Um, and yeah, that's, that's really the major feature. Yeah. Okay, okay. And then just a question kind of about um, how you first got into graphs. Why did you, what drew you to Neo4j? Like, what did you like about it when you first started working with it? Yeah, so that's, um, that's funny because uh, I knew nothing of graphs and uh, we were trying to, we were trying to model this concept of a person's profile. So I worked in a, a people management company where uh, a person and his profile was really central to, to everything. So in terms of your, uh, your employment history, external and internal, your learnings, uh, your certifications, your talent, your performance, your compensation, you know, everything, everything revolved around this person, right? But then the data that you have for a person is, is never consistent. You might have mm -hmm. some data for someone, some for not. And then you also need to fi um, form, uh, you know, get some intelligence out of the the natural, uh, teams and structures that you have in an organization, especially when you're looking at things like um, people with a high flight risk. You know, we know they're going to go, so what are you going to do about it? Uh, do you have people that can replace them, similar skills, uh, people that have worked in similar teams? So all these kinds of questions, because these are very, very key questions to, to most HR um, uh, managers and organizations to be able to efficiently replace people with your own people rather than that cost of going outside. Mm -hmm. How do you plan um, people's talent? You know, get them up the chain to, to being a manager. What skills do they need? What certifications are we lacking? All those sorts of things. So, um, so our system was really sitting in an RDBMS um, in, in Oracle, to be precise. Mm -hmm. And we reached, the, we reached the point where uh, it didn't fit in there anymore. Um, uh, if I remember correctly, we had one table, this one table with 255 columns, uh, out of which like 70% were always null. And then we did like weird application logic, and it was, uh, you know, to show you that person's profile, it was a nightmare. It was, it was, really was. 
So we started looking at NoSQL solutions because that was hot at that time, nine, ten years ago. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we were told, you know, look at column stores because Big Table was, you know, the mm -hmm. thing. Uh, so I Googled it and first, thankfully, a very happy twist of fate, uh, you know, there was this link on a graph database and I read that and I said, like, wow, this is exactly what we need. And then I found Neo4j and then, um, you know, I loved it the moment I looked at it and then I, you know, I just, I haven't looked back since then, so. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, good. And then um, when can we expect Spring Data Neo4j 4.2? Okay, so um, so that really depends on the Spring Data release train. Now, the OGM, which is the library that powers Spring Data, that uh, that is a cycle that we control. So the next uh, version of that should be out, like uh, probably um, during where are we April in the next month, and Spring Data 4.2 should follow closely after that. So. Uh, the good thing is that even even though you may not have a formal version of Spring Data 4.2, you can still uh, swap the upgrade the OGM version underneath it, and then take take advantage of all the new features that are in the OGM. Yeah. Okay. Great. And then um, any other thoughts or um, anything else you want to share? Uh, not really. We're we we're, we're pretty happy that we've had a good response to Spring Data and the OGM. We've met a lot of people today that are using it. Uh, and I'm happy to uh, to use it, thankfully. Um, so, um, so yeah, I mean, um, we we really want to develop this more and add, you know, all the features that everybody wants to see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for thank your time you. today. It was great to talk. Thanks. Thanks a lot.